Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we have concluded the first day of the NBA 2K24 Summer League. And it was eventful. It was interesting. And I saw some things from players that I didn't think I would see. I saw some flashes. And I also saw some weaknesses. Now, I'm going to address Wimby and Brandon Miller facing off in a separate video, strictly because some of the discourse regarding Victor Wimbenyama has been absolutely disgusting. So I think it would be more appropriate to have a separate video for that and not have this video drag on. If you ready to see that video, drop a like on this video right now. Drop a comment telling me drop the Wimby video. And it's going to be dropped today i'm just saying we're about to talk about scoot and amen who played before victor women yama and i'd argue they had the much better no it's not an argument now that i'm thinking about it because it was a game winner it was the much better game it was much more exciting and i'm gonna be honest it was a lot cleaner basketball than the spurs game so i honestly rather talk about this rockets trailblazers game but before we get into this video make sure you like comment and subscribe if you're new i am on the road to a thousand subs at a thousand subs i will be giving away a playstation 5 so share this with your friends and everyone you know that you want to get a ps5 and probably play 2k24 with you when it drops i don't know now first off this is probably the biggest storyline surrounding this game despite it being a very good game and despite you know the young players having some excellent flashes of greatness going forward scoop he exited the third quarter with a shoulder injury they said they're more than likely going to sit him out the rest of the summer league which I think is okay because i'll be honest with you he played very well the same with amen he tweaked his ankle i'm not so sure that they'll keep him out per se but i know he's probably done in terms of you know summer league action as it stands in this next week and a half or so but keeping focus on the portland trailblazers and scoot henderson and it's not really me focusing on their team it's going to be young players sprinkled out that i've had my eye on and players that i've been wanting to watch that i've talked about on this channel and scoot he's one of the biggest ones is one of the biggest draws and as a number three overall pick the portland trailblazers did not go wrong with picking him now what i love most about scoot in this game not only did he drop 13 points in the first quarter but if you look at the stat line it doesn't look like he shot too well now in the first quarter he shot majority of his shots and hit majority of them if i'm not mistaken he went five for 13 but what i like to see out of him was the maturity to be able to facilitate when your shot isn't going down we don't see that in a lot of young players coming into the league let alone players that are already in the league and scoop he was able to facilitate pretty well i might add he had six assists and it was basically in a quarter and a half he had it in the second and partially of the third because like i said he went out in the third i think scoot he he's gonna be very good going forward i don't think there's anything to worry about of course efficiency comes with experience in my opinion that's how i feel because a lot of people do judge players being inefficient like Lamelo ball he's 21 years old on his team going nowhere fast the hornets are giving him the ultimate green light so he could figure out his spots and all those other things and i wouldn't be surprised if scoot henderson i won't say has the green light per se because he does have shade and sharp and does have anthony simon and does have the worst contract on his team with jeremy grant so he probably won't have the green light but with that being said this will enable him to be able to develop his facilitating his defense and every other aspect of the game surrounding now this might be a prime opportunity for him to improve his shooting a little bit because there is a bit of of a question mark there but regardless i think we're okay with scoot and i honestly think that scoot got portland in good hands for years to come now shade and sharp because i know i mentioned him i'm gonna just say this right now he's officially too good for the summer league he does not need to play another game bro had a ridiculous dunk on my man jay huff who was i want to say drafted by the lakers last year ridiculous dunk huff does have the ability to protect the rim and Shaden Sharp says, put you on a poster, big fella. It was crazy. The stare down was crazy. Everything was about it was crazy. And he got an N1. So you, you can't be mad at that. But, you know, one thing that was really dope to see in Shaden Sharp was that when Scoot went out, though he is already a Portland Trailblazer and though he's been through NBA games and things of that nature, he was still able to seamlessly step into that role, lead this team, and he essentially took over for Portland going forward. Now, in terms of negatives... I got to see more efficiency out of him. He went three for nine from the three, seven for 21 from the field. I know it's summer league, so I understand the offense is probably running through him and Scoot primarily. But at the same time, you got to hit some of these 
shots. And of course, like I said, he gets the most touches, so it makes sense. But at the NBA level, that's one of the few areas that once it tightens up, he's going to be a star. There's no question about it. He already has the bounce. He has a pretty good jumper. Don't even get me wrong. It's just about them going in more than they're not going in. And like I said, probably two minutes ago, that comes with age in this league. Then we can move on to Chris Murray, Keegan Murray's twin brother. I'm not going to lie. He already looks comfortable scoring at this level. Of course, it's understood that the summer league is not like the NBA level. We get it. We know that. But at the same time, the way I view summer league is three or four guys on that roster. They're guys guys that you're looking to be on your NBA team and really playing I won't say substantial minutes but you know rotation minutes to substantial minutes some something around that range and with that being said the rest of the players that are on most of these summer league teams they're fighting for a job so they're giving it all that they got so with that being said him shooting four for nine and you know showing that he has the comfortability to shoot the ball at this level it's huge and we've seen it with keegan murray excellent shooter excellent player hell he just played a summer league game a couple days ago and went crazy honestly he doesn't need to be in summer league but that's a story for another day overall for the trailblazers their future looks like it's in great hands bro in terms of what they have right now as it stands but i'm gonna be honest this front office seems i guess i would say lost disorganized disoriented something regarding that realm because after seeing this whole dame fiasco it's pretty telling now i understand dame has requested some things and i understand that the trailblazers aren't willing to bend on some things but at the same time both sides are a few years too late in terms of moving dame and getting him somewhere he needs to be which is why we're having the standstill we're having now but with regard to portland's future boy great hands that's all i can say because you got anthony simons you have shaden sharp you have i'm not even gonna say jeremy grant y'all know how i feel about that man he's been still in checks but you have chris murray and i'm gonna be honest with you and i don't think people think about this though i don't really care for jeremy grant he is a solid basketball player we're not gonna misconstrue that here on this channel but if you think about it minus Damian Lillard whatever package you get for Damian Lillard the way the Portland Trailblazers are going to be able to jumpstart their rebuild insane phenomenal there's no other way to put it because what kind of team rebuilds and they already have two or three pieces right then and there just sitting in their lap now all you got to do fix the rotations and do what you got to do to make a playoff push which they didn't seem to do for Dame which is why it makes it so hard for me to be more comfortable with where the direction this team is going strictly because of the front office not the players now what I really wanted to move on to was the winner of this game and the team they face which is the Houston rockets who were manned by amen thompson bro is a bona fide bucket he's a bucket he's a great defender great facilitator and it's only going to develop now i do have a hot take regarding amen and some other things behind the scenes with the team but we'll get to that in a second for the rockets as a whole i think they're young guys they do have some growing to do but they're not too far off now people have been calling for amen to start this year and trust me i get it he has already shown that both defensively and offensively, his IQ is very high, as shown by his three steals and five assists, alongside 16 points and four blocks last night, which is insane because, again, he left early injured, and that's a crazy stat line. Now, unfortunately, this NBA, it's a business. So being that Fred Van Vliet, he's being paid 40 mil, he's going to be starting. There's no other way to put it, unless Amin is starting at the two next to him or at the one and Fred is at the two. Otherwise... Amin is not starting because at the end of the day, you invest that money for a reason, but I don't think it's a bad thing per se. And this is what I'm talking about when I said I would get to that hot take. So walk with me real quick. Everyone's been sitting here talking about how Fred Van Vliet's contract was a poor contract. And at first glance, I understand, I get it, especially when it's coming from a team that is essentially in rebuild mode and they've been in rebuild mode for the last couple of years, at least since they lost James Harden. Now, if we look at the blueprint with regard to making the the playoffs or even the finals for that matter we look at Steph or LeBron and honestly neither one of them reached the playoffs into their third year for LeBron and fourth year for Stephen Curry so if we're truly looking at the Rockets from an unbiased objective standpoint and how young they are this team is bound to develop and be a competitive team going forward now with that being said signing Fred Van Vliet to as much money as you did it was a lot of money I understand but what people seem to sweep under the rug was the fact that it was just a three-year deal and I'm gonna be honest I think it was more so a three-year deal to mentor and 
really and truly he's there to guide Amon and Jalen Green and by the time his contract is up those two will be very very good basketball players going forward because they have a championship vet and I think Ime Adoka and his staff understand how important it is to have a real good vet in your corner a real good vet in your locker room and I think Fred Van Vliet is one of those Dylan Brooks I wouldn't quite call him a veteran quite yet of course he's going to get starter minutes and all that but I would more so consider Fred Van Vliet the veteran here but regardless that three-year deal I'll be honest that's the only way I could justify that deal the fact that he's there to mentor them for three years and they're expecting Amin to be at another level as well as Jalen Green at another level in a few years from now so I, I think that's really what they're going with it if that's not <laughs> They got me beat because I don't know why the hell y'all signed him. But even past their young guard, their front court is also full of talent with Alfred Singyun and Jabari Parker. And of course, Alfie didn't play, but Jabari did. And I'm going to tell you now, boy was hooping. Now, just to start on the highest note for Jabari, I'm going to show you this clip right quick. He has him open. Throws one up in the air. Smith caught it for the win. Oh. Rockets. Wow. What a pass. Victor Wembenyama is the main course tonight, but yeah crazy jump shot and that pass was from Tari Eason now I'm gonna talk about him in a second but for Jabari what I liked and what I saw the most was the fact that he put his leadership on display like besides the game winner or anything like that he dropped 33 while shooting 44 percent shooting from the field and I don't care if he's already been in the league I don't care I, I don't care about none of that having 33 points on 44 percent shooting is a very good feat for a young player now regardless that boy in general he He's escaped them dumbass bust allegations that people were trying to place on him last season. And personally, I love it because I'm high on Jabari. I'm high on his potential. And I want to see Jabari take a leap. And while it won't be too large of a leap, in my opinion, he will start to show why he was picked as high as he was. Now, I'm not going to get to Tari Eason yet because there is one more guy and to me, he was the steal of the draft, or at least one of the steals. I can't say the steal, because I don't think there's ever one steal of a draft, but they have Cam Whitmore. And as I've said before, I did want him on the Lakers. I did want him in the purple and yellow. But overall, I'm pleased with Jalen Huskafino, so we're okay on that front. Cam Whitmore did not shoot the ball too well later on in the game. He shot okay in the first half, but later on in the game, he didn't really shoot too well. And I, I think that was because he was gassed. I'm not gonna lie. There were points where he was lazy on a rebound lazy on defense and for some reason the player he was guarding didn't attack but regardless I could tell a gas player by their laziness on the court laziness on defense and everywhere else so that's probably the issue and why he didn't start shooting well at, towards the end of the game but overall he rebounded very well defended very well and he looks like to be a good rotational piece and then if he develops well he can very well turn into a very good basketball player that sees starter minutes going forward now we're at that boy Tari Eason and I'm not going to lie to y'all, bro. He's a most improved candidate to me now. As it stands right now, Peyton Watson is my most improved. But, you know, that's that's the topic for another day. Now, Tari Eason, man, dominant on both ends of the court dominant on the boards defensively with four blocks and he had an amazing amazing pass to Jabari Eason to seal the game and get a game winner which that pass was insane it looked wild to me and I thought it was gonna get stolen but when you see the replay he put that hoe on the money he threw a dot he looked like Josh Allen out there it was kind of crazy I'm not gonna lie to you he that that's really what he did Jabari caught it hit the three I'm not gonna lie to you guys though Shaden Sharp was in the vicinity of that shot however Shaden Sharp was in no man's land but we're not gonna dwell on that we're gonna talk about Tari Eason and how well he played in this game Tari Eason going forward is going to help this team exponentially and I don't think people quite understand the kind of magnitude the kind of effect he has both offensively and defensively and he's only gonna get better he's a guy that I think is pretty slept on in this league I'm not gonna say underrated because I think underrated is it's a very very overused term that people misconstrue the true definition of it but I do think he is very under the radar people don't know enough about him so they don't talk about him but in the next two three years Tari Eason is going to be on everyone's radar uh whether or not he's a star we'll see we'll find out but regardless he's going to be a good
good player in this league to come so long as he keeps working so long as he gets stronger faster and develops his shot a little bit more but that dude is cold man he got so much raw talent i'm looking forward to watching the houston rockets going forward tari eason is one of those dudes where he doesn't do too much that's flashy and out there on the screen but he does enough to affect the game but that's all i got for you guys in this one this was essentially my review and what i saw with regard to the blazers and rockets first summer league game let me know what you guys think let me know what you guys saw let me know if you saw any i guess you would say downfalls any upsides anything that you just peeped with regard to the game as i said before i will be having another san antonio versus hornets video because i kind of have a lot to say about wimby and brandon miller for that matter so we will touch on that more in another one it's gonna be right after this so you ain't gotta wait too long as always it is your boy tv with the greatest hoop stories and debates on the tube and i promise i'm gonna bring you guys more stories but until then i am out peace